the system will open this, the routing map. Perhaps the most significant change between our current system and ITAP is this, the routing component. At first glance, you probably notice the map appears somewhat similar to that which you've hopefully become familiar with on Getting Around Illinois, or GAI. And that is correct, with the exception of some new symbols, which we'll cover shortly. You'll also likely notice several new links, buttons, phrases, etc. on this page, which may appear confusing at first, but in time you will become very comfortable. Once on this routing page, you first as you can see, are required to accept the conditions within the very important disclaimer box. By doing so, you are again indicating that you understand that IDOT is not responsible for any non-state portions of the route you may ultimately accept. You are stating that you understand it is your responsibility to obtain permits for all non-state roads on the stated route of your permit. This would include toll roads, local roads, and the Skyway. The Skyway, by, it, for example, is Interstate 90 from the Indiana line to where it meets up with Interstate 94 in Chicago at exit 59. Now, over the next several minutes, as we navigate the routing page, we will demonstrate precisely when local jurisdiction roads may appear as part of your tentative route. It's extremely important you fully understand this process because, as you know, failure to do so may result in fines of up to several thousand dollars. So, we're going to click the disclaimer box to accept it. Now, note on the map, or the map on this page, while it's similar to getting around Illinois, is different with respect to symbols. Let's take a quick tour of the icons across the top of the routing page. To view the map legend, click on the toggle map legend icon located in the upper right corner that looks like a piece of paper with some bullet points. Going down through the legend, you'll notice origin and destination points along with waypoints, which we'll cover shortly. Then some new symbols, at least new as you're used to seeing them on the Getting Around Illinois map, obstructions, vertical clearances uh, with a yellow square, permanent and temporary restrictions are now yellow, orangish circles and diamonds, and ton legal structures are now listed as triangles. Also will be demonstrated shortly the jagged red and blue lines uh, will signify your tentative permit routes. And very important, as we'll demo shortly, any route within a green band is a local route, which again, you will be required to get permission. Then down below under jurisdiction legends, you should note these legends are similar to getting around Illinois. It's important to note that any route on your map once you have jurisdiction turned on that is non-red or non-orange is indeed one of those local routes. To eliminate the jurisdiction lines you'll simply click on the jurisdiction again. Along the top of the map, you will see several icons, in addition to the ones we used above, the toggle map, map legend, jurisdiction, and find. There are three different map view icons. Road. Road, of course, is the default base map. It depicts only the roads. Next, as with getting around Illinois, you have an aerial view. This may be particularly helpful when attempting to identify specific origin destinations, researching unfamiliar structures, ramps, etc. And then finally, the hybrid, which we suggest using this link anytime you are using Arial, as it will overlay the names of all the routes and symbols over an Arial map. The next is the stop routing icon. This feature can be used at any time to stop the system when it is trying to find a viable route for your load. We'll demonstrate more on this later.
The jurisdiction button at the top of the page on the left hand side can also be turned on to show you specific jurisdictions of routes. So the lines that he went over in this toggle map legend, you would turn this jurisdiction button on to see which roads are state maintained, which roads are locally maintained. Scrolling across the top will now demonstrate the find option, which we used when explaining jurisdiction. Also, similar to getting around Illinois, this feature is used to zoom your map to a specific location by entering either A, a specific address and city within Illinois. As you can see, we're zoomed in now to uh, our location here in Springfield on Dirksen. For best results, include the type of street included, drive, street, avenue, boulevard, etc., and the city. Second way to use the find box is to type a city with Allen, Illinois. Orland Park, for example, quickly comes up. Next is the bookmarks icon. You can save frequently used starting or ending locations here and then select it later from the drop-down list. For example, you can add your company's yard to this list and then select it each time as either your origin or your destination. Next is the reference guide icon. This is simply another how-to guide in addition to this webinar and the other training material we will show you. Back to the routing page, the next icon is the mileage calculator. This particular system is used to calculate the miles on a specific route you will be traveling. To utilize this feature, you need to first left click on the icon to engage, then find and click on your starting location. Drag the red line along the route and left click to set the line and then continue to drag to the next point along route and click and continue this until you reach your destination at which point you will then double click at your destination. You will then note the total number of miles you are traveling based on the route you chose will be displayed in the box at the center of the map. To close the route you just calculated, you simply need to click on the X. And to turn off the calculator entirely and re-click on the mileage calculator icon. Continuing along the routing page icons, next you'll see the one entitled Previous Next Extent. You can use these icons to take you back to the last map you were looking at and then back to the previous map location, including the correct zoom level. Next is the toggle full screen, which simply makes the map full screen if that's your choice. To return to a minimized screen, simply re-click the toggle icon. Likewise, to create even additional map room, you may even choose to X out of the routing toolbox. To return to it, just simply re-click the routing tool icon. The last icon located on the far left, the routing tool icon. This is, of course, the icon you will use most often. This tool allows you to load information and is where you will enter information necessary for the system to try and find you a viable route. Once a route has been established, it will then show you the route in both the map and in the written form. Along the right hand side of the routing toolbox, you will see five tabs, routing, directions, local roads, load save, and help. Let's take just a few minutes to go over these tabs. First tab, routing. This displays this routing tool tab and will return you to this box at any time you are in the routing component. This is simply the default tab that opens. Dimension weight information. Note at the top of the tool information from your previous uh, application pertaining to dimension and weight is listed. Below that section, you'll note two links. 
The first, ask Permit Office for help. While you may select this option at any time to send a question to the Permit Office, we strongly advise you in your first attempt to route your own permit. Save your attempted route, which we'll demo shortly, then ask the Permit Office for help if necessary. A box will display in which you may type in your question in similar fashion to that which you do in our current system. Next is the link to go back to the application form. For example, should you wish to change the dimension or weights, etc., in an attempt to recalculate a route, you may click the Back to Application form. Below these two links is displayed the route locator results. Note that the origin and destination will not be displayed until completed. Then you have the clear origin and destination, which is self-explanatory. Below these two links is a series of route locator questions, which we'll cover shortly when we begin routing a permit. Skipping below to the bottom of the routing toolbox, you'll see Reset Route, which will clear everything you have inputted in any of the routing steps. It does not, however, clear any application data. Next, the Recalculate Route. This simply recalculates the, the route. And note that this is not used if you do not like your route. It will continue to find the same route. And finally, Map Tool, which looks like the pencil with the red dot under it in the lower right-hand corner of the routing tool. It is used to set an origin, destination, or waypoint on the map. Those terms will be discussed shortly. The remaining four tabs along the right-hand side will be discussed as we go through routing a permit. So, for routing permits, a couple of notes. Ensure that the proper direction of travel, side of the road, is chosen when inputting the origin, destination, and waypoints. Improper entry could prevent the routing tool from finding a viable route and create an incorrect route or simply add extra mileage. Also note, please be patient with the automated routing. Depending on the difficulty and distance of the route, it could take a few minutes. Now, to find a route, you must be on the routing tab specifically beginning with the Route Locator Step 1, Input Routing Options. The initial routing option questions are all defaulted to No. If any apply to you, simply check the Yes box. These options establish routing parameters and affect which roads are used in the routing calculation, as well as permissible origin and destination locations. First, use toll roads for routing. If you wish to travel upon a toll road within Illinois and you plan on obtaining the necessary permits from the Illinois Toll Authority, then click Yes. If not, leave blank. Your answer to this question has no effect on whether the system will route you over a toll road structure when traveling on a state route. Second question, start, stop on interstate. If you, for example, are working on a construction project on an interstate, then click Yes. Third question, will your route use a stopover? If you plan on adding a stopover to your route, then click Yes. Once you have set your origin and destination and the system finds a route for the load, you will have to use Map Tool icon to add a waypoint in order for you to get your stopover. Remember, stopovers may be no more than one-third out of the way of the entire route. And the final question, route via scales. If you wish for your load to be routed to the nearest scale along the route, click Yes. But note that this change is under the new system, and that is you will be routed to the nearest scale which, in some cases, may not be in the direction of your route from your origin. Do not use this if your driver is stopped at a scale. 
Now, once your routing options have been set, click the Next Step button to move on Step two, set your origin. Since step two, set your origin, and step three, set your destination are similar, we're going to combine the two for the purpose of this webinar as much as possible. If your origin or destination is starting within Illinois, first by address. Enter your starting ending address in the address field including street number, name, city. Then click on set location via address. For the origin, once your origin is found, a green circle with a white X, as demonstrated here, will be placed on the map and the routing tool will then move on to step three, set the destination. Once your destination is found, a red circle with a white X will be placed on the map, as demonstrated here, and the routing engine will now begin calculating your route, as you see with the yellow lines. If a route is found, as was in the case here, a dashed red trail along the first leg of the route you'll be traveling will be placed on the map. Had we done a round trip, which this is not, the second leg of the trip would have been marked by a dashed blue trail. If your route contains a local road, toll roads, or the Skyway, those local roads will be shown on the map in a green band, as you can see. That green band surrounds the dash trails. Anytime you see this green band and you ultimately select this route, you are responsible for obtaining the local permission for those routes in the green band. If a route is not available, a pop-up box will appear as you can see, and it will give you the options to use waypoints or clear the route. Waypoints, a very important term in this new system, will be discussed later in step four. If the route found takes you across a toll road structure while traveling on a state maintained route, a pop-up box will appear to notify you, as you can see. If you wish to obtain permission from the Illinois Toll Authority to cross toll structures, you will need to locate the structures your route is taking you across. You can do so by either following the route on Getting Around Illinois Map or by looking at the printed list of such toll structures available on IDOT's Truckers page. Then click OK. If you do not wish to obtain permission from the Illinois Toll Authority, then click Cancel. The system will then attempt to locate another route for you that does not cross the toll road structures. Once the system finds a route, it will automatically take you to the next step. Step four, add waypoints. If the starting or ending point is in the incorrect location, click on Clear Origin Destination button on the routing tool and try again. If the address is not found on the map, a pop-up box will appear telling you the address is not found and to check your spelling. If you are sure that it is the correct address and the map is unable to find it, you will have to set your origin and destination by using the Map Tool icon. This is the icon that looks like a pencil with a red dot located in the bottom right corner of the routing tool. And then clicking on your map at your origin or destination. There you see the map tool demoed. 
<clears throat> Secondly, by the map tool, you may zoom in on the map and locate your exact starting and ending locations. By clicking on the map tool, then clicking on the map at your exact starting and ending location. If you are not zoomed in far enough, the map will zoom in closer and you will have to click on your origin destination again to set the exact location. The results will be the same as described earlier when we set origins and destinations with an address. Now if your origin or destination is starting in a bordering state within Illinois, by border location, first uncheck the yes box next to is start and location within Illinois on the routing locator. This will give you a drop-down list of states that border Illinois. Select the state that you are starting from or ending from the drop-down box. This will then open a list of routes available to use when crossing from the state you selected. Select the route you'll be using when crossing the state line. Once again, the results will be the same as described earlier when we set origins and destinations with an address. At any time during the settings of origin or destination, to reset either, click the appropriate clear origin or clear destination link, and to clear both origin and destination, click the reset route link. All other previously saved data on your application remains saved. Sometimes you'll get what we call a ramp to ramp conflict. In the state of Illinois, we do not allow a route to avoid a vertical clearance or restriction by ramping off an interstate and then ramping back onto the roadway. If this happens, it is called a ramp to ramp conflict. If a ramp to ramp conflict occurs, the routing application will insert a barrier on the off ramp where the ramp to ramp takes place. The barrier will then be displayed to the user with a map tip ramp to ramp conflict. After the barrier is added, the route will automatically attempt to reroute the permit. Step four, very important new terminology, add waypoints. It's perhaps the most important new feature of this system. Waypoints are defined as the means by which you, the customer, may alter the system approved route by adding additional points along a route using either state routes, local roads, or toll roads. Waypoints should generally be used for the following reasons. One, if the system was unable to find you a route and the automated route not found pop-up box appears. Or two, if you do not like the route the system found for you and you wish to alter the auto-generated route to create a different, more desirable route. The first step to add a waypoint is to put a check in the Add Waypoints box, which appears in the bottom half of the routing tool. If it is a single trip, you will be adding a waypoint to the first leg, then select First. If we were doing a round trip and you'd be adding a waypoint to either the first leg or the return leg of the trip, select either first or return. Next is how you select where you want your waypoint to be located. You can then add waypoints in one of two ways. First, by address. Though this is an option, we are not going to demonstrate it at this time because adding waypoints by map click is a more efficient method. So by map click to add a waypoint, first zoom in on the map and locate the exact location of your waypoint. Then click on the map tool. Then click on the map at your exact waypoint location. If you are not zoomed in far enough, the map will zoom you in closer and you will have to click on your waypoint location again. A blue circle with a white X representing your A point or your waypoint will be added to the map as you can see demonstrated. 
Now, multiple waypoints may also be added to a route. Remember, they will be routed in the order they were added. Following each waypoint added, the routing engine will again try to find you a viable route. You can also use the stop routing icon in conjunction with the recalculate route icon at the bottom of the routing toolbox when you need to enter several waypoints without having to wait for the system to recalculate a route after each waypoint is entered, as the system normally does. Finally, the routing engine will again try to find you a viable route using all of the waypoints you selected. Once an acceptable route has been found using the waypoints added, click on Next Step in the routing tool, which will go to Step 5, Finalize a Route. A couple of helpful hints at this point. Sometimes multiple waypoints may need to be added to change your route. Second, to clear all waypoints from the waypoint list and map, simply click the Clear All button. And to clear the last waypoint you may have added in a series of waypoints, simply click Clear the Last Step 5, Finalizing Your Route. This step allows you to view and accept the route the system has found. There are two ways to view the route given. First, by map. Follow along the route along the map. Scroll out on the mapping page, and you should be able to view the entire route that has been approved. The legs of the route will be shown as discussed earlier. If you do not like the route given, click on either the Reject Route or the Reset Route to start the routing process all over again. If you want to change something on any of the previous steps, you may click on Previous Step, and it will take you back one step at a time. And if you approve of the route given, you will need to accept the route. The second way to view the route given is in written form. Follow the written directions. First, click on the second tab, Directions, and follow the written route as it will appear on your permit. Note, the route is much more detailed on this system than it has been in the past. We'll discuss that briefly at the end when we view a permit. The first leg of your trip, single and round trip permits, is under one tab, and the return, should you have a round trip, leg of your trip would be under the other. If your route includes a state route, a local route, tollway, or skyway, it will be noted as state, local, tollway, or skyway in front of the directions for that particular route. And of course, again, you must obtain the appropriate local permission. The third tab, Local Roads. This tab is used to list simply all the routes within your accepted entire route that require state, local, toll road, or skyway permission. Once the system has found an approved route that you will use repeatedly, you have the option to save that route in your route library, located under the Load Save tab. Then you can pull it up the next time you want to use it. Let's now go over how to save a common route. Under the fourth tab, Load and Save. This is another new feature designed to expedite your permitting process. It will be used to save common routes and loads and loads them in for your next permit. Route Library contains a list of common routes created and used by you. First, click on the Load Save tab. Enter a name for your route. 
click on Save, the route, as you can see, will appear at the bottom of the saved route list. The next time you need that route, you'll simply click on the Load Save tab, find the name of the route you wanted loaded, and click on Load. If the route is for a specific job, for example, a wind farm job site, and the job site has been completed, you may simply click on the Load Save tab, select the route, and delete it by clicking on Delete. If you do not like the route given or want to change something, follow the steps given previously to do so. Should you need help? If at any point you are having trouble while on the routing map page, you can ask the permit office for help by clicking A when the pop-up states you are about to navigate away from the routing page. Then enter a note or a question, click Save. Your question or note will then be sent immediately to the permit office. The fifth tab, the Help tab, is simply a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a route via the route locator. <clears throat> Note that you cannot contact the permit office through. If you approve of the route given, you will then be ready to click on Accept Route. The system will then ask you, do you want to ask for the selected route as shown? If so, Click Yes.